Hey, let's let's get started. We have a we have a really have an awesome class today, mostly because we have a guest today, so you don't have to listen to me. All right, man. So, uh, so we, I, yeah, man, I don't know what to say. We have a guest today, and the guest, <laughs> did you just come just come on up, man. This is Will. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't hang on. You, that that was a pretty lame applause. Mad but lame. dude, but 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 wait until he's finished. You're gonna you 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 know you're just gonna love this guy as much as I love this guy. So tell us about you. How'd you go? Go to the first slide. There you are. That's a great photo, by the way. All right. Just give us the the short right, summary. We're gonna talk about education yeah. today. All right. So hey, everybody. My name is Will Smart, and I am a proud Penn State alum. So when I say we are, that was a little lame. We are, we are, thank you. You're welcome. All right, listen, I'm just going to go sit down, all right? <laughs> no, we need you up here. So look, um, just a little bit about me was, you know, I'm a 2019 Penn State alum. College of the Liberal Arts, uh, double major psychology, concentration in neuroscience, global international studies, right? Minor in econ, stuff like that. And, but yeah, I get to my last year, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to just make an impact. And then I learned about something called Teach for America and I thought what they were doing were really, was really cool. It was about developing your leadership and serving underserved communities. And so I taught 11th grade chemistry, 10th grade algebra one, back in my hometown of Philly. And it was such a profound experience, uh, so much so that I decided to become a recruitment manager to empower you know, passionate young leaders like the people in this room to make an impact, right? So that's just a little background, but I know Sam has a few questions for me. No, well listen, man, how, tell us about your schooling growing up. How, how was it? Okay, yeah. Hey, All know. right, yeah, I guess it would make a little bit more sense. Let me tell you a little bit about um, like my background and exactly how I got into this path. So I am the child of immigrants. My parents are from a small country in West Africa called Sierra Leone. Any Sierra Leoneans in the house? Okay, so. <laughs> so um, I grew up in a single parent household, low income community uh, from Philly. And when I was in school, we didn't really have that many resources. Um, we didn't, you know, but the thing is my mom, you know, was an immigrant parent. So it's like, I knew the value of education. I always just like try to make the most of what I had. And the thing is, I actually was shocked that I was actually, an, I'm, I'm an alum of Penn State because I wouldn't even be here today had it been for like nonprofit community-based organizations that gave me an opportunity in areas where it's like, there's not much opportunity to apply for a scholarship and to get Penn State paid for because I wouldn't be here because I can't afford it. You know, tuition is going up and up. Y'all can resonate with that though, right? Maybe not. <laughs> um, and so coming from that background, I was already like acutely aware of social inequity, the effects of poverty. And when I got to college, I was like, okay, I don't know what I wanna do, but I know I wanna make an impact. I don't want I wanna help people, right? So I'm, Fiddling around, I took Social 119. That was a pretty cool class. Um, and then my mom was like, hey, uh, maybe you should be a doctor because in sixth grade, I told her, hey, brain surgeons make a lot of money, but that might be cool. She was like, okay, do that. <laughs> so I was studying to be a doctor because what better way to help people than to heal people? And I wanted to be a doctor specifically in underserved communities because growing up with low income, the healthcare system and the insurance system did me and my family, for lack of a better word, dirty. You know, if you don't have certain insurance coverage or you don't have a certain amount of money, you can't get the healthcare that you need. You can't get the access that you need. You're denied care when you most need it. Had it not been for free clinics and government sponsored programs, I might not even be here today. And so I wanted to like be a part, I wanted to be a doctor to expand opportunities in people that came from backgrounds like me. And so, Fast forward a little bit, and I told Sam a little bit about this. Um, I'm at the, I got this internship at Howard uh, University Hos uh, Hospital, 
and I loved it. I was shadowing black doctors serving a black community. Here we got our black doctors in their pristine white coats, right, with their pagers, marching through the concrete hospital, like helping people. I had old ladies coming up to me saying, young man, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, I guess I didn't even do nothing yet, but I'm trying to learn, right? But it was like such a profound experience. It was so inspiring. However, something for me began to shift because every morning we would walk into the hospital to shadow physicians helping the community. We would walk by homeless people laid out in the street, laid out in front of the door that couldn't get access to the care that they needed. And then it's like dawning on me, I'm like, no matter how hard the doctors are working in the hospital, they couldn't help the people out suffering on the street. This is a systemic issue. And I was like, all right, look, I need to hang up this white coat. I can come back to this. I need to change my major. I was a biobehavioral health major. Any BBH majors here? Jeez, man, <laughs> what are we here? So I was studying biobehavioral health because I was interested in that intersection. But then I had to switch my major because I was more interested in studying systems because really, a lot of people come here, they say, yeah, I wanna help people. But look, I'm gonna tell you this, helping people is not enough. Why do people need help in the first place? because of broken and dysfunctional systems. So I'm like, okay, let's study these broken and dysfunctional systems in hopes that we may be able to change them. So then I switched psychology to better understand people, global international studies to better understand the world and the systems that govern the world. I guess in my last year, like there's some seniors here that didn't go to the career fair and they should have been there, right? And I didn't know what I wanted to do and I found this organization called Teach for America. And they told, and their whole philosophy was that we're trying to find our generation's most promising leaders, and we want to help them use their talents to make the world a better place. I was like, okay, that's, that sounds pretty cool. Who doesn't want to make the world a better? Who wants to make the world a better place? Okay, so we finally got something here, <laughs> right? So I was like, okay, let's do that. And so I signed up to join the fight, and I taught. 11th grade chemistry, 10th grade math, because I wanted to expand opportunities in communities like mine. And so I went to Philly to teach and, and serve as a teacher in a low income community because those communities, our communities need us. So that's a little bit about my background and how I got into teaching. Because I think teaching is a profound act of leadership and it's a way that we can work towards social justice now rather than later. All right, so give us the one minute version of what TFA is. Okay, so one minute version of what TFA is. And then let's, we're going to talk about the systemic issues. Okay, let's get to it. So I said we are, a lot of people think it's a teacher prep program, but that's not the case, right? We are a nonprofit leadership development organization, and we're looking for promising young leaders, right? We want them to use their talents to make the world a better place. And how do we make the world a better place? So, of course, we focus on the issue of education because we know that education is the passport to the future. Y'all heard that one before? Yeah, no, nah, y'all still sleep, okay? Hopefully y'all wake up. So education is a passport to the future, but the education system in this country is broken. We're gonna talk a little bit about the stats today, but here's one stat. There are 16 million children living below the poverty line. 50% of them will drop out before they graduate from high school, let alone make it to college, because the factors that they can't control. And I'm, we're gonna talk about those factors in a little bit, right? I mean, now, Children don't even have that chance to apply themselves. So last, last class, you were talking about choice and chance. So if I'm in a, in a community that I don't have the resources to even actualize my potential, what chance, what choice do I have? Okay, now think about how this impacts other aspects of our society, right? The school to prison pipeline, mass incarceration, wealth and income disparities, the cycle of poverty, and it goes on. You feel me? You feel me, all right? And so the philosophy is that if we can get passionate young leaders, and we cultivate their leadership, we coach them, we develop them, we put you in a network of change makers, then we can make an impact. So how this works is that in the short term, you serve as a lead teacher for two years in a low income community. There you are building your leadership by being proximate to our nation's greatest injustices, right? And then you're gonna get coaching from Teach for America, partnering with the community, and leveraging the skills and talents that you already bring to make an immediate impact on kids in a larger community. And then after your two years, you don't have to have a background in education. 
As a matter of fact, it's great that you have a different and a variety of majors because it allows you to bring different tools with you into the classroom. Now, after the two years, after the leadership that you gain and the impact that you have from working with underserved communities, we support you for a lifetime of impact. We have 100 graduate school partnerships, right, that offer application fee waivers, tuition discounts. We have an alumni network of 60,000 members strong, and our alums go into different fields like they go into politics, they go into healthcare. They stay in education because just like we need great teachers to provide quality education and to care for our kids now, we need great doctors to expand healthcare access in our most underserved communities. We need great lawyers and policymakers to advocate and rewrite policies that have disenfranchised our communities for hundreds of years. We need great equity-minded leaders in every sector of society actively fighting to make a change, right? Because the issue, in my opinion, is that we have too many people in power that have no idea what it's like to serve our communities, yet they're making all the laws and controlling our funding. So this is why we're more than just a teacher program or a leadership development organization. And that, in a nutshell, in two minutes, really, is Teach for America. <laughs> and you can go, these are all these dots here, go back for a second. These dots are all the places where you're operating, including rural communities, urban communities, yeah. low-income communities. Yeah, a lot of people, when they see low-income low communities, we're only thinking about inner-city urban areas, and that is a high need. But let's not forget about our, uh, our rural areas, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and you were on a couple of reservations out Native American, American Indian reservations. Yes, we, do, yeah. we have operated there. So, so the idea is you get a, people get a full teacher's salary, which could be 60 grand, could be 30 grand, depends on the community. Yes. Right? Starting out. So this isn't like you're going to make $15,000. You're going to do well. Yeah, it's not a volunteer program because just like fighting the good fight, your soul's getting paid. We got to pay bills. We got to pay rent. So we got to do that too. So it's full time, full salary, full benefits, 30 to 60K. Dude. Right, depending on the regions. Like in New York, you probably make around 60K. If you're in, you know, maybe the Mississippi Delta, Easy. you might make a little less than that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for that. Thanks for being here. And now let's have a conversation. Yeah.